Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be discussing five major objects that are only visible for people in the southern hemisphere of our planet Earth. Let's talk about this in more detail and welcome to What The Math. So the vast majority of the audience on this channel, including of course myself, we live in the northern hemisphere of the planet. So objects like you see on the screen, the Pinwheel Galaxy, are actually invisible to us. We would have to go to the southern hemisphere to see these objects. In other words, for people in regions like Australia, New Zealand, uh, southern parts of Africa or South America, these uh, things that I'm going to show you in this video are going to be visible, but for us living in the north, like for me living in Asia, or for you maybe living in North America or Europe, you would need to actually travel to be able to see these really, really famous objects. Now we're going to start with number one, and I think this is probably the most uh, famous object on the list. And this is the closest star system, including the closest exoplanet to us, known as Alpha Centauri. Although officially the star system is now known as Rigel Centaurus, and as you can see in Space Engine, it's actually in the southern part of our night sky, right there. This is the star that's just over 4 light years away from us, and as you can see on the screen right now, it's actually a binary star system that has another smaller star known as Proxima Centauri orbiting slightly farther away from them. Now, this particular star system uh, has two stars that are quite similar to our sun. We still haven't really found any definitive planets around it, although there were some cases when people actually thought there was a planet here. But we do know that Proxima Centauri, which is actually invisible to even really powerful uh, amateur telescopes, does have a planet known as Proxima Centauri b. But these two stars can only be seen from the southern hemisphere, even though they're so well known. And so, in order to study this beautiful exoplanet known as Proxima Centauri b, that is located in the habitable zone of its parent star, these scientists have to use southern telescopes, like the ones in Chile, for example. Uh, although, hopefully one day we'll have a really large telescope in Antarctica that will allow us to study the entire southern hemisphere. And actually, if you look really closely, right behind this planet, you'll notice the other objects that I'm going to be talking about in this video. And these are the objects that were originally discovered by Fernando um, Magellan, the Portuguese explorer who, while he was circumnavigating the globe, seen these two objects that were actually very, very visible in the southern sky, but are completely invisible for us in the north. You may have already guessed what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the two satellite galaxies very close to the Milky Way, the Large Magellanic Cloud and the Small Magellanic Cloud. There is the Large Magellanic Cloud, and you can actually see some of the bright stars in it as well. And there is the Small Magellanic Cloud as well. And let's actually zoom into one of them just to see uh, what all of this looks like. Now, Magellanic Clouds are absolutely incredible, and uh, especially the Large Magellanic Cloud, because it actually has one of the brightest and one of the most incredible places in the nearby uh, space, essentially. And I'm, of course, referring to the uh, so-called 30 Doradus. Uh, it's actually a system, or I guess a place, of creation of a tremendous amount of new stars. It's uh, what's known as a star nursery. And this particular star nursery is responsible for creating the biggest, the brightest, the most incredible nebula nearby that we're slowly zooming into, known as the Tarantula Nebula. It's the place for some of the brightest stars, some of the most massive stars, and some of the basically biggest record holders in the nearby space. And because this galaxy is actually not very big in terms of size, uh, just the fact that it has so much uh, activity in it really makes it a very unusual and mysterious place for us. And so this right here is the so-called Tarantula Nebula, and deep inside of it, you'll find quite a lot of incredible, beautiful stars. But unfortunately, only if you live in the Southern Hemisphere can you actually see it with your naked eyes or with a telescope. And if you actually wondered where these two galaxies are located in relation to the Milky Way, uh, there is the Milky Way on the right side. And right here you have the Large Magellanic Cloud and behind it you have the Small Magellanic Cloud uh, a little bit farther away. And since we're already here outside of our galaxy, let's actually take a look at another really cool object that you can only see from the southern hemisphere with a telescope. 
Uh, this is another galaxy, a really amazing galaxy we've talked about on the channel, known as Centaurus A. Now, this is kind of what it looks like in visual light, but the thing is, if you were to use a powerful enough telescope that could also maybe see the X-ray light and also infrared light coming off it, you would see something absolutely incredible. It actually is one of the most remarkable looking galaxies out there because this is actually what it looks like. And as a matter of fact, uh, this galaxy is a prime example of how a, an actual supermassive black hole in the middle of a galaxy can create these incredible jets that you see emanating uh, from this particular galaxy. This is actually a real picture. This is not a simulation or any kind of a CGA. Uh, and the jets that you see are traveling at like half the speed of light. All of this is created by this very active galactic nuclei in the middle of uh, Centaurus A. And this, of course, allows us to study not only the galaxy itself, but also the uh, Einsteinian relativistic effects that uh, this supermassive black hole creates through the interaction with various materials in the galactic core. All right, so we're going to go back to our galaxy, and I'm going to show you yet another example of an incredible thing that you can only see in the southern hemisphere and this is actually the largest most massive most brilliant globular cluster that you can find in the milky way galaxy it's this right here and it is tremendously large and extremely extremely bright and very very massive now it is very far away it's actually over 15,000 light years away from our uh, planet but this particular globular cluster which is basically a collection of stars all together is known as Omega Centauri and it's actually one of the few globular clusters that you can easily see with a naked eye without any binoculars if you are in the southern hemisphere. Basically it's nearby where Alpha Centauri is. And what's interesting about this is that it has a tremendous amount of stars, over 10 million stars here. And for this reason we actually think that this is maybe a remains of a, a really old galaxy that Milky Way actually ate. It consumed it and this is the leftovers. And so maybe just maybe deep inside here, there actually is possibly a very large black hole. These are speculations. We haven't really discovered anything, uh, but it's possible. But anyway, this particular globular cluster, the biggest in a galaxy can only be seen from like Australia or New Zealand or somewhere in Southern Africa. And since we're exploring our own galaxy now, let's actually take a look at another incredible object uh, that Southerners get to see. This is the biggest uh, nebula in our galaxy, the most brilliant and actually absolutely gorgeous as well. And unfortunately, we don't get to see it in the north. And this particular object is known as Carina Nebula. Now, it's actually a very, 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 very large object, several thousand light years across. And um, inside of it, there's quite a lot of really, really cool stuff going on. There is, for example, a star in there that we're going to be talking about in the next video called Eta Carina that's most likely going to be the next very large supernova explosion. There's also a very unusual um, area known as the Homunculus Nebula, which is actually where this particular supernova might occur. And if you were to look at it with a powerful telescope, you would see something resembling this. Now, this is not a supernova, and this is actually not even a nova, as a matter of fact. This is a very unusual event that occurred uh, something like 170 years ago. And I'm going to be talking about this separately in a, in a video about this uh, particular nebula. Now, what's interesting here is that we expect this to go supernova within the next, uh, well, anywhere from like tomorrow to a few million years. And it will most likely be a very, very bright object in the skies uh, that will last for several months. Because this is such an unusually cool region of space that has so much stuff going on in it, this is this alone is actually worth traveling to the south for, uh, just to actually see it in the skies, because it looks very, very beautiful. And it even hosts the brightest, most luminous star in our galaxy, known as WR25. Now, um, if you were to actually look at it from outside of the galaxy, which is, of course, not something that any of us will be doing it anytime soon, but nevertheless, you would actually be able to see Carina Nebula very, very easily from the outside. It's, it can potentially be used as a kind of a navigation, which is actually something that I've done when I did the challenge of trying to find Earth using nothing but visual navigation from outside the galaxy. And so this extremely large, very luminous and very, very beautiful object known as the Carina Nebula is definitely worth exploring the south for. 
As a matter of fact, even if you don't have a telescope, you'll easily see it in the skies and it's going to be very, very beautiful. Now, there are actually a few more honorable mentions here and uh, specifically three of them that I wanted to briefly mention in case you do end up going to the Southern Hemisphere or, or wanted to actually learn more about these particular objects. And first one is actually the second brightest star in the night sky after Sirius. It's a star known as Canopus. And Canopus being a very large, very massive, very, very bright star is uh, mostly visible in the southern hemisphere. Although if you are in the lower and northern regions, you can usually see it on the horizon uh, during certain times of the day. Um, as a matter of fact, like I believe in Tokyo, you can actually see it on uh, like sort of horizon right before dawn. But uh, for the most part, this is known as a southern star and you can easily see it without any telescope, just like the next object I'm about to show you, which is a very, very beautiful nebula. As a matter of fact, this is the only blue nebula, specifically planetary nebula, that you can see in the night skies pretty much without any telescope. And the last uh, honorable mention I was going to uh, include in this list is the galaxy that we started this video with. This is the Pinwheel Galaxy, also known as M83. And um, it's, I guess it's equivalent of like Andromeda Galaxy in the northern skies, but for the southerners, they get the Pinwheel Galaxy and it's very, very beautiful, very, very bright. And in the last few years, we actually discovered some really cool things about it. Like for example, those red spots that you see everywhere, those are actually stellar um, nurseries. That's where the new stars are born. And it totally doesn't make sense to us because we don't expect to find these particular uh, objects in such old ancient galaxies. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about the objects that you can only see from the southern hemisphere on our planet. And hopefully this will inspire you to travel a little bit and go see these objects in the night skies. I've personally actually uh, loved exploring the Australian night skies when I was there many, many years ago. And some of the most incredible things I actually saw in the night skies were in Australia, not in the northern hemisphere. But that's of course a story for another day. Thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this video with someone who loves learning about space, and I'll see you guys in the next video tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.